2x4s are fairly inexpensive, and you get a good amount of material from them. In this video, I'd like to show you how I made this whiskey cabinet with an epoxy tambour door out of two 2x4s. I'm starting with the top section, and I want the entire piece to have straight grain throughout, so I need to cut and glue the 2x4s in a specific way. Most 2x4s that I've seen are flat sawn, meaning the rings on the end grain are almost parallel to the width of the board. That leaves a cathedral pattern on the face and straight grain on the edges. Cutting and spinning the pieces 90 degrees not only gives the panel straight grain, but the grain itself completely hides the glue seams. I glued all the panels this way, and once the glue dried, I did a quick run through the planer to remove any inconsistencies and get them down to their final thickness. I'm starting with the side pieces, and on one end I cut a rabbit so that the bottom panel can sit into it. On the other end, I cut a radius using the bandsaw, cutting close to the line and then sanding to the line with a disc sander. I took my time to get this pretty accurate since I'll be referencing off of this later on. At this point, I was pretty eager to work on the tambour door since this is the first time I'm trying it. I cut strips from the 2x4 to work on the Kumiko panel, and I cut half laps into those strips using my Kumiko crosscut sled. I have a video and plans linked in the description on the sled if you're interested. I cut two long pieces and a bunch of shorter ones that will link those two together and that'll make up the pattern. I'm using quarter inch plywood for the back panel of the door, and I start by gluing the handle on first. I left 3 8 of an inch overhang on either side of the handle, and that section of the plywood will ride in the track of the side pieces, which I'll get to cutting later on. I then glue on some strips, which will frame the door and also keep the epoxy from spilling out. After trimming the Kumiko panel to the final size, I can start mixing the epoxy. I'm using Total Boat for this, which on its own dries very clear, but I wanted the final color of the door to be mainly black with a little bit of purple. Unfortunately, I don't have any black pigments on hand, so I combined dark brown, green, and purple. If you want anything from the Total Boat website like epoxy, paint, or finish, you can use the code down below and that'll get you 15% off. While the epoxy sets, I can work on the rest of the cabinet, and the next thing to do is cut a groove on the side panels for the back panel to fit into it. I clamped the block to the fence of my table saw so I don't cut too far, and took several passes to sneak up on the proper fit. Next, I need to cut a track in these pieces for the door to ride into. I picked up this great tip to do it on the router table from my buddy Michael Alm, who has several tambour projects on his YouTube channel and was a big inspiration for this build. You want to mark the center of the bit on the fence of your router table. I moved the fences together so they would meet in line with the center of the bit. Then while cutting, you want to make sure your workpiece is always in contact with the fence at that point. I did a practice run before committing to these pieces and it works great as long as you take it slow.
With that done, I can drill the holes for the dowel joinery that will connect the top piece to the side pieces. I'm using bamboo skewers for this, and after a bit of sanding, I'm ready to glue up the cabinet together. It's really important that this cabinet is square, or else the door will bind and won't function properly. Taking time to cut joinery really paid off because it pulled all the pieces square and right where they needed to be. To finish the cabinet, I use General Finishes Black Poly. It's like applying stain and finish within the same coat. It saves time and this has become one of my favorite finishes. After the epoxy cured, some pockets in the panel were a little bit lower than others. I sanded with 120 grit to make sure everything was even and moved around to not create too much friction and melt the epoxy. I then switched to 220 grit and lightly wet sanded with 2000 grit to remove any swirl marks. Next, I have to cut this panel into strips and I'm worried about distorting the pattern here because with every cut, I'm removing material that's the thickness of the saw blade. So I opted to use the bandsaw, which is the thinnest blade I have, and I used a resaw blade to help keep the cuts straight. After making sure all the strips were in the correct order, I flipped them over to glue the canvas on the back that'll hold all the pieces together. Since the handle is a little thicker than all the other pieces, I'll have to glue this on later. I held everything together with inner frame and put tape over the edges where I don't want to glue the canvas to. That area will ride within the track of the cabinet. You can use a lot of different types of canvas for this and a simple drop cloth works really well but I decided to go with this canvas that I got from an art supply store. This has a white gesso applied to its face, which is a primer for the canvas. I wanna make sure that that face faces up so that I'm gluing raw canvas to the wood. Wood glue works really well here and I wanna make sure to cover all of the strips completely so that I have a strong bond between the wood and the canvas. It also helps to firmly press it down and get rid of all of the wrinkles. When I get to the back corners, I cut a slit so that the canvas isn't folding over itself. On the other end, I still need to connect the handle piece, so I don't want to cut the canvas and risk ruining it. So I replace that section of the frame with something shorter that allows the canvas to fold over it. Letting it dry for about 30 minutes, I carefully removed it from the frame and made sure none of the pieces were stuck together. I did this a couple times until the glue fully dried. Then I cut off the extra canvas and I can glue on the handle piece. For the handle itself, I wanted to do a cord wrapped handle and I want to avoid having any knots show. So I start by making a loop that's longer than the section I want to wrap. And as I'm wrapping, I want to make sure to avoid any gaps and keep everything nice and tight. When you get to the end, you want to thread the excess material through the loop and pull on the opposite end to tuck the loop underneath the wrap. This might be a little bit tricky because of all the tension within the wrap, so I used a pair of pliers to help do this. After drilling a hole on either end, I can cut the handle to size and I use bamboo skewers to attach it to the door. To avoid putting on too much glue and having an excess amount of squeeze out, I use a piece of canvas to brush the glue onto the dowels. I then lightly tap on the handle to get it to seat in its final position. So far I showed you the process of making the top section which holds the bottles, but I followed those same exact steps and made a smaller section which will hold the whiskey glasses. To attach the cabinet to the wall, I made up these strips with threaded inserts and holes for the floating hardware to slip into. 
I should have done this before I put the finish on, but I glued these pieces to the bottom of the top cabinet. The rubber bands just hold all the pieces in the right alignment. I wanted these cabinets to come apart if I ever needed to remove the doors. So I'm using binding bolts which have a large head and I'm going through the bottom cabinet into the threaded inserts. The last thing to do is to slide it onto the floating shelf hardware and tighten the set screw I have on either side so that it stays in place. This was a really fun project as I've never made a tambour door before and this definitely won't be the last time. It's much easier than I originally thought and I couldn't be happier with the results. It's pretty hard to believe that this came from a couple 2x4s. If you're interested, this cabinet is available for sale and there's more details on that down below. Let me know what you think of this build in the comments and more importantly what you would put in it. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future ones. Thanks for watching.